I predict works by gathering the knowledge of its 5,000 plus traders. If a stock has a price of 57 cents, that means the market thinks that event has a 57% chance of happening. If you agree, you buy. If you disagree, you short. And if you're right, you make money. Good evening New Zealand, this is day 22 until the country goes to the polls. Welcome to I Predict Election 2011, the most accurate source of political and economic information in New Zealand broadcasting. Our three predictions tonight. Prediction 1. I predict saw Nikki Kay's probability of winning Auckland Central drop from 80% last month to 73% in the wake of the backbenchers debate. She's still looking good to win, but what went wrong? Prediction 2. Colmar Brunton's landline polls released last night claim national at 56% support. The I predict market, however, says 46.5% party support. Are national voters being lulled into a false sense of complacency by Guy and Espina and the New Zealand Herald? Prediction 3. Unemployment figures released yesterday showed unemployment increased to 6.6% and the market after heavy trading last night is predicting a 40% probability it will remain over 6.5% into the December quarter. Phil needs to show us the money, but John Key needs to show us the jobs. To dissect these predictions, let me introduce tonight's panel. She is one of the National Party's next generation of political superstars, Auckland Central MP Nikki Kay. And he is the NBR's political columnist, Moral Shepherd of the Right, Matthew Hooton. Welcome to you both. We'll also wrap this show with a final prediction, but let's kick things off with tonight's first market prediction. After the backbenchers debate on TVNZ7, Nikki Kay's probability of winning the Auckland Central electorate dropped from 80% last month to 73%. I've hosted three debates between Jacinda and Nikki on Citizen A throughout this year in the build-up to the 2011 election, and to be honest, Nikki has held her ground in each and every one. So what happened during the backbenchers debate? Nikki, while the backbenchers debate was more coliseum than town hall, let's be clear, you still held your own against Jacinda in the argument. But what was most interesting was the incredibly poor performance of the Green Party candidate Denise Roche. For many Green voters, the backbenchers debate may have been the first time they saw her perform. The market is suggesting they weren't impressed. How do you woo the Auckland Central blue-green vote? Well, the first thing I'd say is a couple of things. You've, um, you mentioned that uh, there was a significant drop, but actually if you look over the last month, I've sort of been on the market at about 73% on average for the last month. So there's been a couple of spikes, mm. so I wouldn't read too much into that. But secondly, in terms of Denise, I've actually had a lot to do with her, and I think she's a very strong local representative for Waiheke. She wasn't and nice to you in the debate. But I wouldn't underestimate her. And I think one of the things that you learn about I predict is that there's going to be some events and mm. um, stock might fluctuate. But it's really important to look at what the trend is. And mm -hmm. the trend, um, I'm really pleased, is showing that I've been in the 70s for um, quite, a, quite a period. Um, obviously, I'm not being complacent. I'm just working hard for every single vote. Mm -hmm. How do you woo the blue-green vote? Well, there's a number of things that I've done in my term, uh, particularly in terms of the Haraki Golf. Mm -hmm. So I've um, been involved in both waste management policy, and I've worked with the Mayor on that. Secondly, I've called for a review of the Haraki Golf Marine Park legislation. And thirdly, I think you saw with the... Um, mining of Schedule 4 that mm -hmm. I opposed mining on Great Barrier Island and I've had um, a great feedback from the electorate. Do you think National's deep sea drilling policy would make Green voters concerned about voting for you? Uh, I think what I've sort of sensed on the doorstep is people are a lot smarter than that. They look at your whole um, set of policies and they look at what you've done locally and what people are saying to me is they're quite confident they've seen me consistently be a strong advocate for the environment and they want me um, in Parliament, they like the blue-green message, that balance in terms of our environmental uh, policies, but also ensuring that we have sustainable economic growth. So you don't think they were horrified by the Rena disaster? Uh, look, everybody was upset to see a shipwreck mm. um, that potentially, and you know, obviously did do damage to our environment. But uh, you're cleaning you know, it up today. In this, I mean, I think there's over a thousand tonnes of oil that's come off the ship. So. I think people understand that there are certain things that are outside your control and what they really watch for is how you respond to those events. And do you think National responded well? We had um, Simon Bridges on yesterday, he admitted there was a communication breakdown for those first four days. Well I think, um, look, there's a lot of emotion with something mm. like that because mm. a lot of people who live in Tauranga are actually there uh, because they love the beach. It's pristine. And so I think what was sort of happening in those first few days was an incredible amount of emotion, everybody was upset. But I think um, since then we've actually seen, I mean the maritime officials were on the boat mm. the same day. Yep. Um, and I don't think the technical part was questioned. 
Uh, that's yeah. right, and we've seen um, a significant amount of progress in terms of getting rid of that oil. Matthew, you were at the backbenchers debate. With only a 1,500 majority, Nikki needs to appeal to those green electorate votes if she is to seal this victory this month. Denise pulled 4,500 in 2008 simply on the strength of the green brand. After seeing her in action, though, what were your thoughts? Well, um, you're right that Nikki needs those blue-green voters and um, in her, her stance against Jerry Brownlee where she broke ranks with the party line mm. to save Great uh, Barrier Island, I think that's Although some attractive. would suggest that that was a patsy to begin with. Well, you know, we know exactly, well Nikki can't talk about it, but Nikki knows exactly what happened to her in caucus. Mm -hmm. You know, she, she broke ranks and she took a bold and courageous move there. I think though, um, Nikki's biggest threat to winning the seat is uh, the incompetence of Denise Roche. Mm. I mean, mm. every time she um, spoke at that debate, Jacinda Ardern got another 100 votes. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's, if there's going to be 4,500 votes that uh, are up for grabs, mm. um, there is a fight over that. Nikki has green credentials, um, and, but I can't see um, poor old Denise holding those votes. Can I just say something though? Yeah. I, mean, I, I am picking up. Um, on the doorstep that the Greens, and we're seeing it in the national polls, are doing pretty well. Mm. Um, and I think uh, there's a pr proportion of people that don't split their vote. They're mm. always going to vote for the candidate. And yep. that's what we've seen in New Zealand politics over a period of time. Well, let's so talk about that, 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 that party vote because, and a question to both of you. At 11.5% party mm. vote, the I predict market is suggesting Denise is in on the list anyway. Uh, will Green voters oh, recycle she? their electorate vote knowing Denise won't need it? Well, uh, look, I mean, I think... Um, Greens are big on recycling. Well, I think people can see that the Greens are doing a bit better. Mm. But I think probably Denise is right on the cusp. So that's sort of a debatable point, actually. OK, 11.5, she's in. Well, well, she is in. Um, and I, you know, I think that Nikki will, will win this seat mm -hmm. because of the reasons um, we've been discussing. It's a national seat. National has fought for this seat um, for decades. First time they've won it? Um, Nikki won it. She, mm -hmm. she succeeded where Murray McCulley failed in against, 1975. Against Judith, is that? Well, yes, but Judith has had her. Um, she had some positive aspects to you her. You nicknamed her the hand, Prime well, Minister's still. handbag. So uh, this is a seat that National wants to win. Yes. It is a higher socioeconomic um, uh, electorate. Mm -hmm. It is green. It is contemporary. And it's not going to help um, Jacinda Ardern that she seems to be comparing Auckland Central on this show to Wellington but, Central. Which but is also, I mean, the thing about um, Auckland Central, and you know, I'm just going to work hard for every yep. vote, but um, there's 7,500 small businesses and self employed mm -hmm. people in this mm -hmm. electorate. And what I could tell you, particularly the last month in terms of Labour's policies, um, I'm getting a lot of support from those people. Okay. Now, you've how, how many dawns have you knocked on? Uh, I think I'm at about 8,000 now. I hope to mm. hit the 10,000 mark, which is what I did last time. That's but right. I've got a lot of work to do in the next three weeks. Question to both of you. Uh, Nikki's probability to win Auckland Central is at 73%. Would you buy that stock because you think Nikki will win or would you short this stock because 1,500 majority isn't enough of a margin? I think the good news for Nikki is that I don't think Denise Roche will get much more media coverage. Yes. So that's going to help Nikki. If, if, uh, so you, you're, you're saying those green votes will buy. go to Nikki, I not think, Jacinda? I, I think that uh, it's a buy. 75 mm -hmm. cents, that's a 33% return mm -hmm. in, what, 22 days. That's one of the best investments you can get is buying all consensual uh, Of course, Nikki, would you be shorting yourself at this point? Yeah, I'd buy. You'd buy, you'd <laughs> buy. Um, go well, it's going to be very close. I think the question will come down to will those 4,500 go for Nikki or will they go for Jacinda and that will be the decider. Uh, thank you, panel. Let's move on to prediction two. I predict are predicting that the National Party vote will be 46.5% while the latest landline polls from Colmar Brunton and the Herald are claiming 56% and 54% respectively. In a recession this steep, how accurate are these landline polls? Nikki, the Herald Digipoll infamously last year predicted Len Brown and John Banks were neck and neck in the first Super City mayoralty race when Len, Len ended up by winning 49% to John's 35%. The Herald failed miserably because landline penetration into the poorer suburbs of Auckland mm. warped their result. Are national voters being led into complacency about this week's polls? Well, look, I think um, we would all um, say that we want as many people to turn out for national mm -hmm. as possible. And there is a risk with complacency because mm. we've been uh, consistently, and you always look at the overall last trends. Last three years, last uh, three years. Been polling relatively high. So um, I am making sure that I get out there and get the message that people need to turn out for the Nats. But the thing that I'd say is the TVNZ poll asks a very different question to what the iPredict stock is doing. Mm. TVNZ poll is, who would you vote for, right? iPredict is, really, who do you think is going to win the election? And I think there are a couple of things that might be inf influencing iPredict being a bit lower. 
And one of them is that traditionally the smaller parties pick up mm. in, the, in the lead up to the campaign. But what's really interesting is that so the, the incumbent would drop, but what we're seeing is Labour dropping. And mm. I think that's because of this serious situation in terms of their fiscal responsibility. You think 45%, which was the high, mar high, high tide mark last election, you think Nationals are going to get over that? Look, um, I think we've still got 22 days to go, but I, can't, I am sensing a lot of support out there, but I do think we've really got to continue to put out that message that we need the Nats to turn out. Because if, we d yep, if, you yep. know, if one in ten National Party people don't turn out, mm -hmm. then John Key may not be Prime Minister. Because, of course, in 2008, it was one of the lowest voter turnouts we'd ever had on record, and the, the largest reason for that was 200,000 Labour Party voters just didn't come out to vote. Mm. Do you think turnout is going to be the key here? Yeah, I do, but I think what has actually happened over the last couple of weeks, um, particularly in terms of the national vote and particularly all of this focus on economic policy mm. and the fiscal irresponsibility of the Labour Party, I think our Nats will turn out. Do you think with an $18 billion deficit and two credit downgrades, the economic res uh, responsibility isn't with national? The, the, the re economic irresponsibility is with Labour because at a very basic level, political parties and leaders need to be able to explain what the costings are of their policies. And for the, <laughs> Where's the money? Party, Where's the money? For the Labour Party the not money? to be able yeah. to explain this. Matthew, your Go column on electionresults.co.nz, brilliant column by the way, uh, this week talks about an attempt on Monday by someone to manipulate the market in favour of a Labour Party win, but pointed out that the market was able to correct itself within an hour as other traders astutely shorted that manipulation. Why are traders not as optimistic for National as TVNZ and the Herald? Um, that was an interesting attempt. Some thousands of shares traded mm. uh, on that, and but it is, as you say, the market uh, corrected very, mm. very quickly. And National's been sitting around 46 to 47 for some time. And as you say, the, the, the uh, polls and the TV stations say it's 56%. Mm. I think 56 is too high, but I would say National will get 50%. I think, really? Yes, that is a huge I, I, I call. I think that this will be the first time since uh, Sid Holland yes. achieved that in, in uh, 1951. I think 50% is possible, especially now uh, that Phil Goff has made just an absolute turkey of himself over Labour's um, policy. Well, if you, one, if you, one, if you, one, one, one block. Well, no, one, one no. Block. If, you, if you have been a member of Parliament yep. since 1981, yep. Yep. Uh, you've been a you know, yep. Minister of Education, Minister of Employment, yep. Minister of Housing yep. for Roger yep. Douglas yep. in the 1980s, yep. you've been leader of the Labour Party yep. for three years, and three weeks before an election, mm. you can't account for your, your fiscal policy. Well, they're policy. accounting for it today, that, aren't they? They're well, they're, for it today. This, th those figures have presumably just been made up overnight. They are <laughs> oh, come they have, on well, now. Well, come on. well why on earth were they not released immediately? After Goff made such a fool of himself mm -hmm. on that TV mm. debate, yep. on that mm. uh, Christchurch press, press debate, yep. you would have thought that the Labour spin doctors, if that spreadsheet had really existed, That's they right. would have issued it before that debate was even and over. Yet, and yet, they and yet are the lying. Market, and yet the market is saying 40, 46. Well, I think it's a buy. You think it's a buy? Absolutely, it's a buy at 46. So, so you, would, you would say, I mean, the only other times we've had, of course, a Muldoon, Longy and Bolger have come in with 48. 48. But they would change governments every single time. You're suggesting for the first time in uh, what New Zealand history, political history, a national party from 45 is going to go to 50%. Yes. Five more. And, and, and the reason for that uh -huh. is that... One, one in, blund blunder by in, golf. In 2008, Labour had a popular and competent mm. leader, Helen Clark. Mm. Um, rather than mm. Phil Goff. Mm. Uh, and back then, Labour was able to tell the story mm -hmm. about the hidden agenda, that, mm -hmm. that in fact, John Key was really mm. like Don mm. Brash, but just better at hiding yeah, it, yeah, yeah. and all that stuff. Now, that those lies can't be told by mm. Labour anymore, mm. and mm. You know, a choice between... Because them, the secret agenda is up, up, up front now. Well, it's, it's, a, 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 a moderate yeah. national government is, yeah. is more popular. Um, in this society than Phil Goff. But I think but course, Matthew's yep, right. Yep. Matthew's absolutely right. Never, I think it would be difficult to find such an extraordinary gap between how the leaders are rated. If you look back in New Zealand's mm -hmm. history, and I think that's what um, gives me a bit of confidence, mm -hmm. is that when I meet people on the doorstep, um, there's just such a big gap, both even with Labour mm -hmm. and Green mm -hmm. voters who rate John over Phil. Wouldn't there be a, the, the comeback, of course, is that food parcels have doubled this year. We've had a vast amount of poverty increase. Well, landlines, people well, wouldn't be on those landlines. Well, no, they? but like, I'd say a couple of things about that. You know, yep. I've now knocked on about 8,000 doors, and what, is, what people are saying to me is they rate 
John Key as a leader. But, over but Phil you Gold. also in know fact, people are a lot more a lot more polite in New Zealand to people's faces than that. There was well, a great story in the Herald, wasn't there, about people saying things nice to John Key. Then when he walked off, they were they were backstabbing well, him. Well, well, I'd say another couple of things. Um, we've consistently seen the polls reasonably high for national, and I think that really does have to do with two things. They trust, people trust us in terms mm -hmm. of our economic policy, and clearly with the situation mm -hmm. with Phil Goff not being able to explain so, the cost so thing. You don't, you don't think and it's secondly, because poverty's they gotten, on. You don't think it's because poverty, poverty's gotten larger? No, look, okay. I think... I, I, um, I, question to both of you. Guy and Espina is presenting the poll last night, when he was presenting the poll mm -hmm. last night, cast, cast doubt on its validity himself by saying that even he thought National at 56 was too high. Are the mainstream media polls representing popular opinion, or are they manipulating it? Oh, broadly, you know, representing them. The polls, the landline polls, have their flaws, mm -hmm. um, but they're they're not completely, you know, mm. out of out of. Um, uh, apart from the Lynn Brown and, and John. Well, Banks yeah, but it's a few points. As I say, I don't think National gets fifty six. Well, nor does Guy. But I'd say you're looking at fifty for National. Okay. I don't know, we're going to have to work really hard because, as I said before, mm. if we don't get turnout, then. You know, one in ten nets don't turn out, and and John Key may not be prime minister. National of course, needs of course, of course. fifty. Let's be very clear, yep. because especially if Winston Peters, who I see has um, emerged from wherever he's been, mm. um, you know, if he does get five percent, and mm. you just never know with him, mm. then that Labour, Winston with Peters, Hone Hara, oh, yeah. a Green Party, yep. and it's Sykes, the John the Minto government, the glorious, the uh, glorious Rainbow Coalition. Um, because that's so you're, not you're there. So your fifty percent, your fifty percent, just going back to that. 2008, 200,000 Labour Party voters didn't vote, making it the, one of the lowest turnouts in, in, in New Zealand history. You think that of that 200,000 who sort of went, you know what, Helen, after all of the, you haven't really given us a hell of a lot, we're not voting for you this time, but we won't vote for National either. You think that they are going to come back into the game and vote John Key? Well, they may not vote at all. I mean, look, if they, so again, it's if they, didn't, if they didn't vote for Helen Clark, mm -hmm. when she had given them working for families, mm -hmm. she had given interest-free student mm -hmm. loans, she had done, you know, she had spent the, everything, mm -hmm. uh, as we know, and they put the country in deficit in their, in their last budget. Um, if they didn't vote for Helen Clark, they sure as hell not going to want to vote for Phil Goff. Oh, <laughs> well, one of the points that I make to people is whether it's the 100,000 houses that we've insulated with the Green Party mm -hmm. or the fact that when you actually look, even though Labour is saying they're going to raise the minimum wage, which would um, cost the country jobs, well, they're also saying they're going to bring in a more aggressive ETS scheme, which mm. would raise people's power bills. Mm. They're also saying they're going to bring in an EQC um, tax hike. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, you know, I, I sort of think whether it's that or even the additional Auckland fuel tax, people mm -hmm. understand if they're on um, a medium wage or even on a um, on a benefit that mm -hmm. Labour are going to bring in a whole lot more cost to New Zealanders. I uh, think that's almost too sophisticated. Yeah. I just think that no one's listening to Phil Goff. All Labour see of him. But, but when guy, he says when he's not he, as never the uh, cost things to listen. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, question to both of you: At forty six point five percent for the National Party vote, would you buy that stock because National will get higher? Or would you short it? You're yep. saying 50%. As I said, buy it. I reckon there's a good potential 10% return. I, I think that is insane. You must well, short. I'd this buy is far it. I'd too buy it up to 48 and, at oh, the very oh, least. And you're, you're, it's, 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 still it's, profit. Akin, it's akin to your Cunliffe call this week, suggesting that his majority would go down. Absolutely and ridiculous. I'll, I'll place a bet on that right now. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, where would you be going? Are you saying 46.5 is where you're going to get? We're going to have to work very hard, and we're going to need the nets to turn out. But I'd buy it. Are you concerned that Labour, there was a great story in the Herald again this week about Labour getting all the unionist activists out to make sure that turnout on election day was the numbers. How does National compete against that? Well, I think we compete against that by people looking at the situation with Phil Goff and saying that he can't manage the economy. <laughs> Thank you, Bannon. Moving on to prediction three. The unemployment rate surprised most commentators yesterday by increasing to 6.6% while the iPredict market, after heavy trading last night, is predicting a 40% probability it will remain over 6.5% into the December quarter. Matthew, this increase in unemployment occurred during the Rugby World Cup, which is significant, as one of the budget's two pillars for growth this year was the Rugby World Cup. Is this the last canary in the coal mine in terms of Treasury's optimistic 2.6% GDP growth forecast. Um, look, New Zealand unemployment is looking good internationally. If you go to the socialist countries of Europe, uh, the European Union, they've got unemployment of 9.3%. Mm. You look at you look at uh, Greece, 165 In Spain, unemployment is 20%. That does happen to be a global economic turn down, uh, downturn, and you've got to say 
that no one wants unemployment to be over six mm. percent, mm. but yeah. we are looking far better than most mm. countries in the that's, world. That's a good answer, but it didn't actually answer the question. Do you think that this is the last canary in the coal mine in terms of Treasury's optimistic 2.6 percent? Well, I, I, I do believe that the Treasury's forecasts in both the budget and in the pre food that they released mm. under Ruth Richardson's Fiscal Responsibility Act, um, I think they're slightly too optimistic. They but, are you know, too optimistic. That's, this so, is so forecasting. Quite, this yeah, is an yeah, art, not a science. Course, of course. Right? So. But with, with that increase, it means that we're going to have less money. Well, it does. It means to be higher welfare payments and lower tax. And yes, I, I don't believe that the government will get back into surplus the year it's forecasting. Right. I think it'll be the following year. Okay. Um, that's a hell of a lot better, of course, than under Mr. Goff when if well, he we does. We don't know the numbers. We don't know well, the numbers. You can't <laughs> say that. You can't say well, that. Yeah. Nikki, in light of Nationals' welfare reforms aimed <laughs> at putting more beneficiaries into work, with unemployment ticking up and the iPredict market predicting a 58.3% probability that it will still be above 6% by March 2012. Where will these beneficiaries find the jobs? Well, I think there's a couple of things. Firstly, we announced the other day our starting out wage, um, whereby we believe that will create... Sweatshop labour? No, Sweatshop we, will, labor? we believe that will create a number of jobs. If you look at the contrast, though, between national and labour mm. in this, this area, so labour are saying they're going to scrap the 90-day period. That, mm. that created, we think, about 13,000 jobs. They're saying they're going to raise minimum wage. Mm. There's 6,000 jobs gone. Well, they would um, disagree with those figures. Uh, we've also, um, I think, you know, we've obviously our trade academy policy. But, but if you actually look at the number of people that are saying that they think that unemployment will go down, you're actually, from the figures that you've just mm, quoted, yeah, think, yeah, yeah. so there's, a, there's a, a significant proportion who are saying they think it will go down. But why do I think there's some uncertainty there? I think there might be two factors in that. One is that up towards an election, mm. uh, regardless of the fact that people might have um, think National's doing well, there's uncertainty there mm. because there's a very clear contrast at this election mm. in terms of our small business policies. And I think part of that might be people just with that uncertainty in, around an election. But then also we've got some serious situations happening overseas. Mm. And I think people are really worried about the um, Europe situation mm, and obviously Greece. Um, so I think those two factors might be influencing yeah. that result. But there's some really positive news yeah. in actually the um, unemployment figures. We saw growth in a number of regions. It was actually Canterbury, where obviously we've got a, a very difficult situation, whereby they uh, that severely affected these mm. unemployment sure. figures. But but during the Rugby World Cup, I mean, this was sold to us by the, 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 the budget. This was our major pillar for growth. If we were increased our unemployment during where we thought we would be gaining more, mm. surely that in itself is a suggestion that things are going to get worse. Well, I think we have to acknowledge from the Rugby World Cup there has been a significant injection of cash into the economy. But one in of the some points, places. What are the, places. That's right. Um, one of the points that a lot of people make about that economic benefit is it's going to take a while for some of that to flow through. So, so why was, was it included in the budget this year? Well, wh what I'd say is that we have to, if you're asking me whether I think there's been um, an extraordinary economic benefit overall mm -hmm. from Rugby World yep, Cup, yep. I'd say yes. Okay. But some of that stuff, we're going to see flow through um, at a later date. Okay. And I'll give you an okay. example. I mean, yep. I, I saw there were a number of people within the cloud that came to New Zealand, significant okay. investors that yep. are looking at our country. Yep. And some of that will take time, mm. I think, to realise those benefits. Where do you think the beneficiaries get, get work, though? If, if we are ha increasing unemployment, we're pushing more people into work mm. and wanting them to work, mm. where will those solo mothers and the, the ill and the sick, where are they going to get the That's jobs? That's a really good question. And ultimately, this is what I believe. There are 500,000 small businesses in this country, mm. and the best thing we can do to improve youth unemployment and our unemployment mm. is support those businesses and create an environment where they can employ people. And that's not... Um, what Labour Party policy is. Labour Party policy is, is to whack them around, give them um, a capital gains tax, get rid of the 90-day, increase minimum wage. And I can tell you, when I'm walking the streets of Auckland Central, mm. there are a whole lot of small businesses who are on the edge, and they are not going to survive those policies. See, so that's you not think quite you true, though, Nikki, is it? Because Labour's capital gains tax policy, which I actually think is a good idea in mm, principle, of course. they're not even going to implement it till 2016. So well, they're not going to be taxing anyone. Their superannuation change doesn't come in. Just, so just, let me, just let on let me make a couple of points just, about just that. Just coming back to the beneficiaries, though, the, the, where are they going to find this work? Um, so, so It'll be those small businesses. So that do do, do you work. think, though, that sweatshop wages are the way that we're going to be able to buy a, um, a high-wage economy? Well, two things. I don't think that they are sweatshop wages. It is What we've done is we've been very specific and we've 16 targeted, and year olds, we've targeted and three groups. Um, people who don't people. vote much. No, we've targeted three groups of people mm. who we believe 
would get an extra foot in the door mm -hmm. if, if for a six month period they got also, also a Also the weakest of the members wage. of society don't really have a hell of a lot of voice. So you can push them around a little bit, can't well, you? Well look, Bomber, since I've been elected I've had about 8,000 um, constituency queries and I can oh. tell you that some of the most heartbreaking situations that I've had have been the young people through my office yep. and if you ask them, they want a job. Oh, look, they exploiting people when they're, when they're hungry well, and poor is an easy thing no to do, bomber. isn't it? No, it's for a, for a short period of time ah, how to long? get uh, six months for 16, 17 year olds. Uh -huh. And we've been very specific about the people that we've targeted. To get Hi, yeah, yeah, people, people who don't Anyone, have much voice and get pushed business, around, that's right. Any small business owner, this is yep. the reality, mm. who employs a 16 and 17 year old mm. is actually doing it out of the goodness of their heart. They're not mm. going to get productivity from the 16 and 17 year old in that first well, six I'm months. I'm sure there are so plenty of 16 and 17 so year olds that disagree with no, it. No, and that's Question. why... And yep. that's why it is good to have this because it's... it's that's right. Yeah, yeah. We, we've heard the justification well, for lowering wages many times. Question to both of you. Higher unemployment well, and lowering wages. it's not lowering the wage. Well, it is for fact, them. It no, is for them. No, because it's a hell of a lot higher than zero, well, which, right. which is the alternative. That's right. Exploitation that's doesn't, right. works nicely. Higher unemployment and lower growth means less money and more costs. If National do win the election, what would they cut from the budget or would they need to borrow more? I fear they won't cut where they should. Okay. Um, this government has failed mm -hmm. on a number of fronts. The first one is the $3 billion it wastes each year on Le Helen Clark's Working for Families. Making middle class people feel uh, middle class. Um, it's, it, this government wastes a billion dollars a year on KiwiSaver subsidies even though they've halved it. The government has failed to reintroduce interest on student loans. Mm -hmm. That's another billion dollars. So they'll borrow. They're going to borrow more? That's another billion dollars. John Key's reckless promise mm -hmm. um, not to touch superannuation. Mm -hmm. That's more billions. So, so they'll I'd, borrow. If you it was up to me, borrow? I'd slash all those programs. Would, but but I, don't, I don't think this government has any inclination yeah. to take those decisions. So it's well, more borrowing. Hold, hold on. So I just want to get an answer. The, more borrowing? the borrowing will go on, I believe, till 2015. Right. The government, it looks to me, is going to be borrowing about $34,000 yep. per household. So, so, so National's you know, sort of thrust of, we're not going to borrow as much as Labor. Well, actually, then, actually when you strip it back, it's a lie, isn't well, it? Well, no, because they, they've got going to borrow national about $34,000 per household over the next four years. Labour would make it $50,000 Are you going to borrow more well, what are you going to cut? Well, clearly Matthew and I um, disagree on this area because really? I think, look, I'm he's... Sure. Um, but, but what well, I, she's a liberal. Well, what, I, what I'd say <laughs> is the difference between national and labour yep. at this election yep. is that we are going to be in surplus by 2014, 2015, mm, and labour are going to are borrow an prediction. extra 17 okay, okay, billion yeah. well, over they the next four years. That is a significant you, economic yep. difference between you, you the two parties. You know those treasury figures. No, they're not. And can very I just say, they're Phil figures. They're exactly. And we can don't I know just say, well, he did. He, he agreed with John. We, Key, okay, I've got to move. I've got to move on. At 40 percent probability of unemployment being over 6 percent in December, would you buy the stock immediately, seeing as it's currently 6.6 percent? Or will it drop 0.7% by December, meaning you would short this? I'd, I'd short it. I, I think that. It's uh, going to drop I, I, think, I think unemployment will be in that 6 to 6.5 range in this December quarter. Oh, okay, what would you do? You, 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 you seem what? upset oh, about that. Point seven. Is it going to drop 0.7, Matthew? That's ridiculous. The Are you going to. Oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> just. It didn't do it during the Rugby World Cup. At 40% probability, um, are you going to buy or are you going to short? Well, I think if National win the election, then we will see unemployment drop. Oh, for the love of God. Okay, thank you, panel. Let's wrap this show with final production. Prediction. Matthew, your final prediction tonight. Uh, United Future is currently trading at one cent. That's I think that's far too high. <laughs> that's I, way too it got high. got 0.8% of the vote last time. I think it should trade at about 0.2. Uh, your prediction, final prediction tonight. The Greens got 6.7%, I think, at the last election. Yes. I think we'll see them um, do a lot better this time. They yes. may even get over 8.5% um, at this election. Not saying 10%? Well, um, I think they'll do a lot better. I'd, I'd say 8.5% at least. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Nuki, to my final prediction. The Mana Party launched their official election campaign tomorrow, and I've been invited to MC it. Uh, with the momentum they have generated this week, I think the 1.3% party vote currently predicted, and I predict, is too low. 12% of the New Zealand electorate are beneficiaries, and Mana's policies, like Feed the Kids, are tailored directly to that electorate. I would buy Mana stock at the 3%, but short it if it got any higher than that. Uh, next week, I am... I am joined by guests Winston Peters, Peter Dunn, Hone Hadawera, Matthew Hooten, Phoebe Fletcher, Selwyn Manning, and a special debate on political values between Colin Craig and Sue Bradford. Follow me on my Citizen Bomber Twitter and Facebook accounts for all my latest election updates. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you again next week, 7 p.m. for I Predict Election 2011, exclusively on Stratus TV. Until then, get trading. <laughs>